Many thanks for your time this afternoon, Brian. Very long title there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rufiwa, <laughs> and uh, good day to the viewers. No, absolutely. Um, let's start by g giving a sense of the reasons for having uh, this workshop. Okay, th thank you for that. Uh, I think the main reason for having this workshop is to um, uh, is to contribute to the bigger agenda of the of the International Heavy Oil Association, which is a, a global organization which has got about ten member countries. This organization has been in existence. Uh, for the past 40 years, uh, looking at technical advancement, technology deployment, you know, to improve efficiency, safety, uh, and, and rail capacity uh, for, for, for our entire railway industry. So from Cape Town last year, so when we had a big conference, an IAJ conference, it became clear that whilst the heavy haul industry has done very well in the past uh, in terms of deploying technology, uh, we're now in the era of the fourth industrial revolution, uh, which we need to gear for. Uh, the past successes uh, or deployment of the technology we've done before is not, guarant not going to guarantee you know, our future success. So we need to take a paradigm shift. We need to uh, uh, move from a good, per solid performance we've had over the past 40 years as a heavy haul industry uh, to move to great. And, and, and for, for us to do that, we need to embrace the fourth industrial revolution and look at what's the impact of it. So at a global level, that's what those 10 member countries are doing. They're putting together a team uh, to come up with a vision, we call it 2030 vision. Uh, what is the 2030 vision for the railways under the fourth industrial revolution? How will heavy haul railway look like uh, in, in, in the future under the fourth industrial revolution? So they're trying to answer that question. And uh, uh, next year in Norway, we're gonna have a big conference where the outcome of this work group is gonna be shared. And Transnet is a, is a, is a, is a leader, or should I say South Africa, through Transnet, is leading that, uh, that agenda. So, so, so the next three days uh, workshop is aimed at uh, contributing to that agenda and saying, what is it that we need to do as far as the heavy haul industry uh, uh, to improve uh, on what we have done in the past uh, from the point of view of technology de deployment uh, and, and implementing some of the fourth industrial revolution uh, technologies. That's from the heavy haul space. But now there's a bigger uh, uh, objective uh, which is associated with that, which talks about Africa. Because the 10 member countries that I'm talking about have got South Africa because of our iron ore system and the coal system, which is moving heavier train, long trains. So the rest of the network uh, in African continent is not part of those global developments uh, from the techno technology nature. So therefore, we, we really want to use the next three days to say, so what's in it for the rest of the rail African railways? Because I mean, as you know, I mean, Africa is a land of opportunity. Uh, we've got so much minerals, uh, uh, natural minerals, and, and industrialization, uh, should I say resource-based industrialization, you know, is, is key for the African continent. And our intra-trade amongst the countries is still sitting at very low levels mm -hmm. compared to our counterparts. So therefore, rail has got a big role uh, uh, to play there. And we want to bring the best practice uh, from the international or global, um, you know, initiatives into the rest of the African uh, 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 continent in terms of implementing some of these solutions. Yeah, I mean, I just want to go back to a point that you made earlier about coming up with uh, that Vision 2030 um, and integrating the fourth industrial revolution. Yes. A sense from you, practical working steps that we can begin to start integrating the fourth industrial revolution um, into the heavy haul industry as well as the railway. We talk about the fourth industrial yes. revolution, but taking the actionable steps is actually very really difficult. Yes, it is, but uh, uh, that's why we need uh, to have uh, sort of a focused approach on it. There must be a deliberate effort. Uh, the first step is to understand what the fourth industrial revolution impact could be. So, so that's why the, in the next three days we're going to be uncovering what are these fourth industrial revolution type of technologies that are out there. And therefore trying to understand how can they be applied within the railway industry. So the first step is to understand, you know, what exactly is the fourth industrial revolution and the potential impact to railways. And, and, and after that, we need to have a, an organized, uh, should I say, a deliberate effort to make sure that we can, we can, we can own the future. Uh, if we don't do that, we're going to be disrupted by technologies. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the fourth industrial revolution uh, is, is here. Uh, it's not it's still coming, it's here. We hear of tests of driverless trucks in other parts of the world. Uh, world. Uh, we hear of driverless trains, for example, in Australia that are in implementation as we speak. Mm -hmm. So pockets of, are already, pockets of it are already uh, in implementation. So we want as a railway industry to have a sort of like a collaboration and, and, and try and own the future and say, with us, this is what it will mean. Mm. 
and, 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 and going, especially for Africa. What does it mean for Africa, considering our environment, our context, in terms of social challenges that we're having, and, and so on and so on. So, so, so it's those two things. Firstly, understand what it is. Yeah. Unpack those technologies. That's what we're going to be doing the next three days. And, and secondly, uh, come, come with collaboration uh, initiatives, whereby you can have collaboration by the rest of the African railways, mm. uh, which will feed into the global space in terms of uh, uh, you know, the transformation of the railway industry. So, so those, those are what we things that we're going to be discussing during, during this yeah, week. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just a final thought from you. You speak about that collaboration. Mm. How easy will it be? Because I'm sure you're aware uh, various regions within the continent have various challenges, whether it be infrastructure, regulatory environment, yes. creating um, a conducive, um, economic, um, viable mm. railway system or various other systems. How do we collaborate to make sure that this actually happens? Okay. Well, I think from the, the strategic uh, or policy or should I say a political point of view, I think a lot of work has been made. Mm. A lot of strides has been, has been taken by the organizations such as the AU, uh, the NEPAD, uh, you know, the SADC uh, objectives. And, and, and in the context of railway, you also have an association called the Southern African Railway Association, which has been existing for a number of years. That consists of the, of the chief executive of all the Southern African railways. Uh, and, and also the policies get discussed there and, also, and things like uh, uh, strategic issues, the funding issues and so on. So, so I, th I think that the environment uh, is, uh, has significantly improved from the point of view of making sure that we can start doing business. Um, uh, now, the next layer that we see a big missing is the one of the, you know, the, the technical chapter. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, whilst this work has been done, how do you bring the best practice now? Because you're going to have solutions, uh, sort of projects that need to be implemented, a railway line that needs to be rehabilitated. How do you ensure you do that using best practice? Mm. So, so we, s we see a case for that. And we're going to start with the Southern African Railways. Uh, and they are coming during the, the workshop. And we're going to be signing an MOU between South Africa, Southern African Railway Association and the South African Heavy Oil Association to collaborate on how do we bring these technical, technological uh, innovation aspects into, into the rest of the continent. And we started with, we're starting with the Southern African. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's what we're going to be working on in the next three days. It's exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> uh, many thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank I've you. been speaking, there, of course, uh, to Brian Monakali, who's the chairperson of the SAHA and the IHA, as well as the GM of Transnet.